All right, today's a very important travel day. It's just before 8 a.m. here in New York City. I'm walking around the financial district, and there's no better way to start the day than to go pick up some coffee. So the financial district is a lot quieter. It takes longer to wake up, as you guys can tell. The streets have people, but it's not dense, bustling, filled with people like Midtown or some of the other neighborhoods in New York City are. Black Fox is my favorite coffee shop in New York City. I'd argue they probably have the best coffee in the world. This is their vanilla date latte. I'm usually not into sweetened drinks, but this thing is sweetened probably the perfect amount. And it's also got that kick of vanilla. So it's excellent. Really good. We are on our way to LaGuardia Airport from the Financial District, and we're gonna hop on a plane to Boston, and then hop on a small propeller plane to Lebanon, New Hampshire, because we are currently on a work trip to go recruit some Dartmouth students for, you know, for general recruiting processes, for sophomore summer internships, for junior summer internships, all that. So we're gonna be doing a series of info sessions, coffee chats, meeting with students, telling them about the firm, and then also doing some, you know, recruiting-esque events where we're evaluating them and getting a sense of who are the strongest candidates, who should be getting the interviews when applications open in a couple weeks. This is actually really exciting. There are not that many occasions where someone at my junior level gets to travel for work. So instead of spending today in a stuffy office, Tip tapping in Excel and PowerPoint. We get to go do something fun. We get to go back to school, our old stomping grounds, and and hang out and you know do these recruiting events, which are really stressful when you're the student doing them. I remember what it was like, but when you're on the other side, it's more of just a fun, a fun event. Currently crossing over the Brooklyn Bridge. The Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge are right next to each other. The Brooklyn Bridge comes first if you're you know, looking up from Southern Manhattan, like the financial district. Had a bit of a misunderstanding with the Uber. Got dropped off at Terminal C instead of Terminal D. And now we're on the walkway to Terminal D. Luckily we got here decently early. It's about an hour before boarding starts. So hopefully we're gonna be fine as long as the security line's not insane. Stairs are over there. Okay, right. We made it to Terminal D. Got to go up the stairs to departures and then we need to show Noah the art of using the airline apps, like the Delta app, to get your boarding pass on your phone instead of having to print it. Because apparently he was not aware that that technology exists yet. Okay. That's the flight checked in good so view boarding pass awesome and then there's going to be an option to add to apple wallet there's a tap to complete check-in oh yeah there you go add to apple wallet awesome let's go hi morning made it through security if there's one thing I highly recommend about airport travel, it's definitely getting TSA pre-check or clear. It just made the whole security process way faster. I didn't have to take off my shoes. Um, you know, I didn't have to take my laptop out of my bag and the line was just way shorter compared to this line over here. My friend had to wait in and it took him way longer to get through security, but no worries, I'm just waiting for him right outside here. Wow, Noah, thanks for finally making it. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, where's our gate? I'm looking that up now. All right, thanks, I'll just follow you. Onward and upward to gate D6. Let's go.
LaGuardia is one of those neo airports where every restaurant has an iPad that you order from. They're just trying to, I guess, minimize human interaction or maximize efficiency. I don't know what it's about. Personally, I'm not a fan. I like to speak with a human when I'm ordering at a restaurant instead of using the iPad. It feels dehumanizing. It just feels kind of wrong. I don't know what it is about it. But that's the situation here. I think Newark was one of the first airports to do it. And then now the whole iPad plague is spreading across all New York City airports. Sir, I'm gonna need to remove you from the premises here. <laughs> Why do you have a, a filming stick? <laughs> Selfie stick? Yeah. Filming vlogs. <laughs> Why? Safely at the gate before the flight, boarding has not begun yet. So I'm gonna go find the bathroom and make sure I am situated for this very long 45 minute flight from New York City to Boston. To travel to Dartmouth College in rural New Hampshire from New York City, there's a couple different options. You could take a bus called the Dartmouth Coach that will take you directly from the city to campus, but that takes about five hours and it's a bus ride, so it's a little bumpy and you know we're driving through upstate New York and New Hampshire, so service, cell service is spotty, the Wi-Fi is not very fast, entertainment options are limited. Another option is you can fly to Boston, like I'm doing, and then take the Dartmouth coach from Boston. And that's a shorter bus ride, it's about three hours. It's pretty convenient, it picks you up at the airport and drops you off right at campus, but it's still a bus ride. And then yet another option is once you get to Boston, hop on a propeller plane that will take you from Boston Airport to the small airstrip in Lebanon, New Hampshire, which is about a 15 minute drive from campus. So that's pretty convenient. That plane takes only 50 minutes and it's a, it's a propeller plane, so it's flying pretty low to the ground. So you can see these beautiful sweeping views of the New Hampshire and Massachusetts landscape on the way there. So that's the option that we are taking today to get to campus. But the best option to travel from New York City to Dartmouth's campus is to take a propeller plane from the Westchester County Airport in White Plains, New York, all the way to Lebanon, New Hampshire. That flight is like, takes 70 minutes in the air, and then it drops you off in Lebanon, which like I said, is like 10, 15 minute drive from campus. So super, super convenient. Time to get on the plane. I usually wait until the last possible second to board just because I want to spend minimal time on the plane, but then that means I get the worst access to overhead bins and all that, and my two friends right now want to board the plane, so I'm getting on the plane early. to convince them not to check my bag at the gate, but I think it worked. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be departing soon. Got Noah right Before behind me. Before closing the boarding door, What's up? federal regulations <laughs> what is that? require all carry-on items are still It's gonna be a 45 minute flight. officially touched down in Boston. We actually touched down half an hour early, so props to Delta. Half an hour early on a 40 minute flight is actually amazing. So mega props to Delta. Now we have to figure out how to get to terminal C. We're in terminal A right now to hop on the propeller plane to Lebanon. All right, Jackson, how do we get there? I think we go that way. That, that was not helpful. This way? We go left, we go out the exit, we're gonna have to go through a parking garage. What? <laughs> okay, after arguing with each other about whether it's correct to go left or right, I think we figured it out. We need to go across the parking lot to bridge the gap between Terminal A here and Terminal C.
hello from Terminal C in the Boston Logan Airport. I think we did something wrong because we are now going to have to go through airport security again, but we were not clear on if there was a better way to get from Terminal A to here at Terminal C without, you know, passing the security checkpoint and having to redo the security process. So here we go. There's no line though, so no complaints. Time to get on the propeller plane. Let's go. Doing well. All right, back on the ground. Thank God that was a rough flight. Uh, we got a car that is picking us up right now and going to take us to Dartmouth College campus. Let's, it's, it's a nice big boy to fit all of our, big car to fit all of our luggage. Let's do a quick hotel room tour. a painting on the left hand side and then a full-sized mirror where you can see me a small makeup mirror on the side here which I will not be using and then a bunch of fancy soaps so we got I never use the body lotion afterwards but I'll be using the shampoo conditioner and the body wash a fancy looking toilet and then a pretty big shower here with its own light. So overall, I would say this is quite a nice bathroom. No complaints at all. All right, in here, walk-in closet with stocked robes. I will definitely be using this after I shower, and I'll be lounging and reading a book or something like that. So that's a nice addition. This iron will come in handy too because I've got my uh, dress clothes with me for the recruiting events this weekend. Okay, walking into the room, boom, thermostat, and then seating area, and little wine cooler here in case I buy a bottle. I might do that it, just, just to feel classy, but probably not, we'll see. The coffee bar and the desk area, which comes stocked with Vermont brand Keurig. So that's the Green Mountain brand. And then also some hot chocolate, I might try that. We'll see. A full-size mirror, perfect for getting dressed. And then the bed area. And this bed is definitely a king-size bed. It is massive. And here you can see the popcorn that I picked up on the car ride here. He had a, the driver had a stash of snacks, which was a great addition. Out of the window, the view honestly isn't the greatest. So we are currently looking at the uh, campus of Dartmouth right now, but we are only on the second floor, so there isn't much to see, but we're looking at the campus green. It's covered in snow right now. And then you can kind of see in the background there, it's the main clock tower um, that appears in all the like photos of, of Dartmouth. We've got our TV, pretty standard, a dresser. I'll be stocking that with my clothes and then the second nightstand and this thing comes equipped with this old-fashioned looking radio right here where you turn it on let's see what happens and then they know they knew i love country music so interesting 
All right, there. They knew I love country music, so they put it on the country music station. But yeah, this is the room. It's currently 12.30 at night, and that means it is hot chocolate time. So if you guys remember the coffee machine I showed you guys, the Keurig in the hotel room I showed you earlier, it comes with six Keurig cups. And we don't want any caffeine right now because it's late at night. So we're gonna go with this hot cocoa mix. And I'm gonna be honest, the Swiss Miss brand hot cocoa mix in general, like the powdered stuff that you traditionally buy from the grocery store, I don't really even think that stuff is, is the best. It's not too good. Um, and I therefore have even lower expectations for this Keurig version of the Swiss Miss, but Let's give it a shot. And I also hope everyone appreciates my makeshift working setup over here. So we got the laptop set up with the keyboard and then we also have a mouse. Makes everything much more efficient. Here goes nothing. I don't really know how to operate these machines, but let's figure it out. So it says press to open. Go ahead and do that. We'll put in the pod right there, and then we will close it. We got to dump in the water, so have a mug of water ready right here. Dump that in. No one saw that I just spilled a little, and I think I overfilled it as well, but let's see what happens. Maybe we'll get some watery hot cocoa. And then this light is now flashing, which is telling me to press it. And there we go, heating up. So here we have it. There's our hot cocoa. Let's take it out. One fresh Keurig brewed hot cocoa. It's time for the official taste test of the Keurig brand Swiss Miss hot cocoa. Like I said, I don't even think this stuff is good in the normal powder packet form, but let's see. Yeah, that's absolutely horrible. I will take part of the blame for this atrocious hot cocoa though, because as I mentioned, I did put too much water in the Keurig machine, meaning, yeah, the hot cocoa is too watery, but it also just has this horrible aftertaste that I don't think I cause. All right, so currently in the middle of all of today's recruiting events. The day kicked off at 8.30 a.m. with a women's networking breakfast. I, of course, was not invited to participate in that, which makes sense. Um, so my day actually kicked off at 10.30 a.m. with a series of coffee chats, which are still ongoing. So in these coffee chats, students will come in, um, they'll hand us their resume, and then you know I'll sort of give them a little background on myself, and then I'll ask them for a little background on themselves. We'll we'll talk about why they're interested in investment banking, and then we'll basically open it up to an open forum for them to ask me any questions about my job and any questions about the recruiting process. And um, you know we're just supposed to just get a general sense for how prepared the candidate is for the interview process and if they should be identified as a high priority candidate as as well. And you know they've been getting a little repetitive so far, and I think it's actually hard to fully judge someone just in 15 or 30 minutes. So I'm thinking for my next two, I'm going to ask them some light technical questions, and and see how that goes. So that's exciting. The two other events that I'm handling today after the coffee chats are a diversity networking hour. So this is just basically a networking session specifically targeted for students from diverse backgrounds. And the way that's going to work is a couple of the people from my company, including me, are going to sort of sit up in front of everyone on a panel. Um, there's going to be questions that we are asked, and then we're going to answer those questions in front of everyone. And then afterwards, it's going to open up into more roundtable informal networking, where we'll you know scatter ourselves across the room, and students will be able to come up to us and sort of circle around and, and ask us any questions that, that they might have. This usually turns out to be like a little bit more forced than um, we would like, you know, people aren't asking the questions that they 
really want answers to sometimes. They are just asking questions that, you know, the standard questions asked that they kind of have a sense for. I'll give a specific example. So, you know, one question or two questions on everyone's mind are one, how much do you get paid? And two, like, what are your hours? Like, how much are you actually working? Is it really 6 a.m. every night? But those questions are sort of inappropriate to ask in this professional networking setting. So instead, students are gonna ask, you know, walk me through a day in your life, even though they've already asked that question to a bunch of other people that they've networked with and they're sort of getting the same answer over and over again and they're not exactly curious in my answer, but they feel like that's the kind of question they gotta ask in this in this situation and they're just trying to get conversation in and get their name out there. So that's how these events usually turn out, but every once in a while, um, someone throws a very interesting question, maybe more specific about a market trend or a recent deal and, and that can get much more interesting and, and make that candidate stand out. And the final event that I am particip participating in today is an athlete networking reception. So again, very similar structure to the diversity event, except this one is specifically reserved for student athletes. And you know that that lasts from 6:30 to 7:30 p.m. So we are we are fully going all day into the evening on this networking stuff. But no complaints on my end. It's very stressful to do this as a student, but at least from my end, it, it's actually kind of fun. I did end up getting somewhat dressed up for today. The attire was business professional, meaning I should be wearing a suit and a tie, but. Uh, I had a bit of a mishap with my suit. I only have one suit right now and there was a small rip in the in the pants so I couldn't wear them. So instead I have this Bonobos quarter zip and then a Charles Tierwitt white, simple white button down. And then, you know, better angle here for pants and shoes. I'm wearing Lululemon Commission pants, the slim fitted black version. And for my shoes, these are Beckett Simonon loafers, and then I'm just wearing black dress socks. Overall, keeping it pretty simple, and this is way also way more comfortable to wear than a suit and especially a tie where, you know, it's constraining you at the neck and makes it a little uncomfortable to walk around like this. No complaints.